I can't do it. Okay. We'll do it live. Okay. We'll, no. we'll do it live. F it. Do it live. I can. I'll write it and we'll do it live. F thing sucks. Sexism in gaming. Woo! Yes. Woo! Sexism. Yeah. Every time G4 is brought up in various channels, even in this YouTube channel, we have the chat in front of us, I can see you, without a doubt, there will be backlash because I'm not as bangable as the previous host. Oh, oh, we're not gonna talk about sexism in gaming? Oh, you're, you're saying it's a bad thing. Hmm. Nerderotic.com. In all seriousness, is it sexism in gaming or is it a thin-skinned teleprompter host who is too busy being offended by a couple of comments to realize that she actually is being treated as an equal? This is the art of of fan blaming conflating a couple of salty comments with all the rest of them so a host or a creative can deflect from legitimate criticism like not having a greater knowledge of the thing they are making or covering or maybe accidentally admitting even though they were reading off a teleprompter that they don't play the games they review and they actually have a team of writers to divide and conquer play our reviews are written and produced by a team of people Hello, darkness, my old friend. so when said fan blamer gets called out on their bullshit they have a tendency to get on their soapbox and spread their righteous indignation by generalizing painting with a broad brush or build a straw man to blame anybody else to get a lot of applause from your comrades in the 67,000 square foot studio you see some sleigh queens in the chat and you're feeling pretty good about yourself then you get home and see that the channel that you're a part of that you didn't have to put any money into but you're getting paid pretty well for is bleeding subscribers because of you you can't feel pretty good so of course they'll continue to blame the fan when all you need to do is listen to Michael Jackson and look at the man or the woman or the they them in the mirror. But we do need to talk about something much more important. The audience, the paying customer, the fan, the thing that the access media, the mainstream media, big tech, and big Hollywood love to make the villain. You, that's right, you, the very same people they rely on to buy the products that they advertise on their shows to pay those exorbitant salaries for teleprompter readers or the writers for the teleprompter readers or through the teleprompter readers to pay the agents also to pay the rent for that 67,000 square foot studio that they never needed in the first place. So the drama has continued for two weeks longer than I thought it would, so much so that I'm actually making a video, but it's not really about Frosk. It's about G4 and it's about betraying what you initially existed for. It's Kevin Smith all over again. That's right, the very same Kevin Smith who was to many, not to me, the king of the nerds and went out and lied to his audience about the bait and switch in He-Man, got caught in the lie, and then tried to blame a YouTube channel, Clownfish TV, who are part of the audience. You see where I'm going with this? Up front, I'll state, Frost knows a lot more about gaming than I ever will, and I don't care. That's not what we're here to discuss. A lot of people have already talked about the ins and outs of what she got wrong with some of her statements about the Xbox console and PS5, and she got some exclusives mixed up, and she got called out for it. I think the um, PlayStation is uh, kind of dead man walking. Mm. Oh, wow. Uh, you get to have the emails from the Sony Defense Force, not me. I love that. Uh, yeah, so, I, suck. I don't know. I, Hello, darkness, my old friend. That probably led to this amongst other things. I'm talking about the act itself and more importantly, what it does to a channel. And I think the biggest takeaway is she admitted that she doesn't play the games she reviews. Adam will read a script written by the same writer that I will read the other half of the script for, but I'll be the one flamed and that I'll receive special flame just for being a woman. <laughs> And 
yeah, if you're going to review a game, you have to play the entire game. What am I going to review a television show and only watch part of the episode or only watch two thirds of the movie? Now, we've talked about this a lot in the last two episodes of Friday Night Tights. Both will be linked in the description to briefly recap since Frost called the audience sexist and admitted that she and her co-host don't really play the games they review. We also learned that both Frost and this doesn't get brought up enough. Adam Sessler said things like Republicans drink urine and we don't want Trump supporters as followers or viewers acting like they can afford to pick their audience. Unlike G4 TV, all are welcome here, including Trump supporters and Republicans and Catholics and Lutherans and everyone else. Hell, who knows? Maybe even a commie is watching. Stick around. You might learn something and learn to love capitalism. We also learned that Frost has some priors with the League of Legends fans. Also, we learned that the co-host who was rooting her on while she was calling out people who objectify women. It's somehow... Talk to him, Frost! Hey, she cooking, y'all. Tends to say this on his own channel. Every woman that I've ever told me they don't swallow. And every woman that sucked my swallowed. Don't really have a problem with it. Just wanted to point out the hypocrisy. Well, yesterday, Frost called out all the YouTubers, calling them drama farmers and saying that she wants to talk. And all we had to do was contact her through her agent. On a side note, we got to give all due respect to Frost's agent. If they're able to get her any amount of money for working at G4, probably one of the best agents who's ever lived. <clears throat> Are you going to bark all day, little doggy? Or are you going to bite? Turns out Frost Bark is much worse than her bite after calling out all the drama farming YouTubers and then saying we wouldn't respond and then providing us with a fake email address. Some of us found the real one. And when we did respond, she deleted all of her tweets. <laughs> As expected, she didn't respond, and no, I didn't think she was going to be coming on this channel. That's why I wasn't concerned about it at all, and now the point is moot. She deleted all her tweets. The fans can take the win. And what's the lesson to learn here? It doesn't matter if you're a teleprompter reader or a comic book creator or a filmmaker or a content creator here on YouTube. If you go up against the fans, the audience, the paying customer, you will lose every time now what was behind this did frost simply freak out because she got a couple of bad comments or was this plan to get traction for a sluggish g4 tv which certainly is getting a lot of views on twitch there's not a lot of interaction going on in their chat but there are certainly a lot of viewers supposedly there aren't a lot on youtube and they are Fleeing. And it looks like a couple of weeks ago, they might have been view botting one of their shows on Twitch. My good friend and co-host on Friday Night Tights, Ryan Kennel, has done some great work on this. His video will be linked in the description. As you can see, maybe maybe one comment every second. Even, like, God, there hasn't been a comment in a while. Like, look at how slow this chat is moving right now. Look at how slow this chat is moving. Now, they are not on follower only. They're not on sub only mode. They're not even on verified users only mode. Anyone can come in here and chat. It's not like they did on YouTube. There's no restrictions. Look at this. No one is talking, but 30,000 people are supposedly there. They went from 30,000 viewers to 2,800 viewers the following week. And one of the hosts over at G4 TV's attack of the show, Kevin Pereira, was caught view botting back in 2018. Now, it slowed down a bit because I think the subject was cooled down. Quite frankly, I'm okay if I never talk about it again. This might be breaking news for you, G4 TV, but you used to be about the fan. You were the only game in town and you're not anymore and now you're competing against the fan and you're acting like it instead of taking the side of say kotaku why don't you break from the norm and take the side of your audience because that's why youtube channels like mine exist we don't put ourselves above the audience because we are the audience i create content but i also watch a ton of it and when you go out and paint the audience with a broad brush or build a straw man to bring them down well you're bringing down the people who support you 
not a very smart move. Looks like times have changed, G4. Unfortunately, you haven't. If you like what you heard, please like, share, and subscribe. If you didn't like what you heard, I thank you for listening this long. I will see you in the next video. I hate, I hate injustice. I like, I hate injustice. English, mother do you speak it? Nerdorotic.com, please subscribe.